Would you agree that the school shall be profit-oriented? Shall it be divided in profit centers and minimize the cost of every classroom? Shall the director meet fund managers day by day and try to increase the return on investment? Would we regard such a school the more successful, the higher the return on investment it provides is? Shall a hospital be profit-oriented, divided into profit centers? Why should a bank Why should the bank? <laughs> Isn't the bank, as much as a school or a hospital, an essential part of the infrastructure of a society? And isn't the core task of a bank to serve the society as a whole, to increase the general welfare and the common good? The strange thing today is not there's a bank, that a bank does serve the society and the planet. The strange thing today is that a bank strives for profit at the cost of the society and the planet. If we, look, if we look back at history, most of all bank times had a social purpose. Mr. Raiffeisen, founder of a globally successful cooperative bank, said literally, money is not an end, it's a means for an end. But which end? What is the purpose of our economy? The Bavarian Constitution says the economic activity in its entirety serves the common good. The basic law of Germany says property obliges, its use shall also serve the welfare of all. If banks forget the constitutional goal of the economy and their own roots and values and switch to profit orientation instead, they start to gamble with risky products increase inequality and instability, create bubble after bubble and crisis after crisis, and some of them commit crime after crime. They put the whole financial system and the economy upside down. <laughs> <laughs> turning, <laughs> turning a means into an end. We propose to rectify this dead-end strategy and create instead an economy for the common good. But how would a bank for the common good look like? How would it work? Let's assume Peter from the audience is a client and an owner of the bank for the common good. Which might be his motives? I give you five. First motive, Peter will have a peaceful mind, as he can be sure that the bank for the common good does not invest in biotech corporations that introduce GMO in our food, oil corporation, mining companies, or other companies of that stuff. They will keep hands off speculative instruments, no bets on skyrocketing food prices, the collapse of currencies or the bankruptcy of whole states. A bank for the common good will do what a traditional, conventional bank is supposed to do to convert local savings into loans for real and sustainable local business. Second, it will not share a part of its profits to the owners. If it did, Peter and the other owners might become greedy and ask for a higher profit and inside the managers with perverse bonuses to increase the profit and satisfy their greed, which will only find an end in the next financial crisis. Third, the bank will not give interest to Peter as a saver, but instead of shedding tears, Peter will be a richer guy than today. This is one of the weirdest phases of capitalism, that most of all bank clients are happy when they get 50 or 100 or even 500 euros of interest on their savings. 
The point is that the banks only tell us half of the story. They only inform us about the interest that we get, but they do not inform us about the interest that we pay as consumers that buy products and services from companies that take credits from banks and pay credit interests that turn into loan, into savings interests. In this roundabout between consumers and companies and banks and savers, we have some 10% of winners and 90% of losers. Let's see that. Peter is an average guy in financial terms. He has a modest income and has to spend it completely and thus pays a full share of its income for interest. Also, his savings are modest and what he gets in interest is peanuts. Whereas I am a wealthy guy. I have a very high income and I only consume the fourth or fifth part of it and pay a comparatively small share of my income for interest. But I have a huge savings and get a large amount of interest and so I'm a net interest winner and Peter is a net interest loser. I represent between 1 and 10 percent of the population and Peter more than 90. You see, the interest is like all types of capital income, a subtle redistribution mechanism from the middle and lower classes to the financial elites. It widens the gap. The Bank for the Common Good aims at closing the gap. Fourth, if, Pipa, if Peter takes or tries to take a loan from his traditional bank, the bank will pose him a series of questions. Does your project generate more money than you invest in? If it doesn't, Peter will not get the loan. If it promises to do, but contains a high risk, the bank will charge Peter high interest. It has to, because it laws require it. But usually, the bank will not ask him about the consequences of his investment on the environment and the climate, on social cohesion, inclusion and redistribution, on gender issues, human rights, democracy, on the liberties and opportunities of his children and grandchildren. Today, economists and experts of finance regard an investment as successful if it generates a financial return on investment. And if the return is double-digit, some of them get an orgasm. But does a double-digit return on investment tell us something reliable on the ethical, ecological, social and humane consequences of that investment? It doesn't. It is possible that an assumingly successful investment destroys our fundamental values and expropriates the common goods, makes us as a society poorer. The Bank for the Common Good will only grant loans to investments that make the society richer, in all terms, and not only financially. That's why it will apply an exam on the ethical consequences of that investment and only if Peter's project passes both the ethical and the financial exam, it will grant the loan to Peter as an organic farmer, or if he runs a company for renewable energies, or a hospital, or a school. If he contributes to a flourishing community in a healthy environment. Finally, and fifth, the bank will make all loan requests transparent. And I, as another client of the bank, can decide where my money goes. To Peter, the organic farmer, or renewable energies, or a small-scale retirement home, or whatever I'm convinced of. Ethical banking is also the end of black box banking. Still, participation is not limited to investment decisions. The Bank for the Common Good invites its clients and owners to engage not only as economic citizens, but also as political citizens and work together for a more effective regulation of the financial system. To ask, for instance, 
for a size limit for all banks, no bank shall be too big to fail, or a full stop for food speculation, tax havens, vulture funds, high frequency trade, and the like, or a law that makes life easy for common good banks and much harder for profit-oriented banks. How could this work? Well, defining first a common good charter for all banks and banks that subscribe to that charter and fulfill it get all public benefits and support as now. If they don't and opt for profit orientation, they are released to the free markets. No public insurance for the deposits, no access to the public central bank, no business with public entities, and the legal guarantee that no single cent of taxpayers' money will ever be used again to rescue them, for which they have to be small enough to fail. Another challenge for us as citizens. You see, it's essential to engage, engage not only as economic citizens, but also as political citizens, and work together for a more stable, sustainable and democratic financial system. To sum up, this idea is about a private bank with a public purpose that creates a public value and adds value to the common good. Maybe this idea frightens you and makes you upset because there is no such thing as a society, as Margaret Thatcher taught us. But maybe you have a different worldview and think that individuals can only have a good life if they also take care for the well-being of others, and that human societies will only flourish if private businesses take care for the common good. Luckily, the new spirit is spreading more and more, and a new generation of ethical banks is arising, from the Dutch Belgium Triodos Bank, the GLS in Germany, or the Banca Etica in Italia and España. In Austria, we are just starting the first prototype of a bank for the common good. We already founded the cooperative that will hold the future bank and collected 2.5 million euros of capital by crowdfunding. At 3 million, we will apply for the small license, current accounts. At 6 million, for the full license, savings and loans. Our owners know that they will never get a financial return on investment, and we already found more than 3,000. Maybe you will one day be one of them. You're warmly invited to join our bank for the common good or to create your own one in your country. In any case, the economy for the common good has just started here in Brussels with a local group which heartfully invites you to join. Thanks for listening.